Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my craft room here in Cheshire. I thought we would create, <coughs> excuse me, a nice simple card. So there we go. So what I'm going to start with is a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card 300 GSM and it's four inches by six inches and I'm going to use it that way, the landscape way. We're just going to do something really simple. So let me just grab my palette knife just so I've got that ready. And we'll just grab something to wipe everything up with. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using some Distress Oxide inks. So Distress Oxide ink, Vintage Photo and Wilted Violet. I will add uh, a link to my uh, Tracy Evans Boutique Designs online shop. Uh, it's in the description so that if you would like any products, that's that's there. Um, and also at the moment, I've got an offer on any purchases from the website. You get a £10 free workshop of your choice or you can set that against another workshop. Anyway, let's get on with our project and let's have a little bit of creative time together. So I'm going to start with Distress Oxide Vintage Photo and I'm going to do direct to paper. Now, when you do direct to paper, don't press it down like that. Tilt, tilt your ink pad up before you start to drag it. So tilt it up slightly. Let's just grab some kitchen roll. There we go. And we've actually got some sunshine. So I may, because we've got light nights, I may even get a little bit of gardening done. Right. So I'm going to take my oxide ink, my vintage photo, and I'm just going to drag that down onto my card. Now, what you need to be aware of is my vintage photo is very well used. So it's not super juicy. I keep some of these ink pads for this reason. Now, if yours is very juicy, just don't press too hard. Just don't press your ink pad too hard. And just keep adding the ink over your project. Doesn't matter if it moves, it's a background. Don't stress about it too much. And you're just going to add some of that ink on there. So that's your vintage photo. Then I've got Wilted Violet. Now my Wilted Violet is very, very wet. It's very moist. So I'm just going to press a little bit lighter. And because I'm used to the pressure that I need to put on, I can go reasonably quickly. No problem at all. So just apply your ink exactly like that and leave your ink wet. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use the Distress Crackle Paste. I've now got this back in stock online in my shop. So I'm using the Distress Crackle Texture Paste. And, and then I'll show you what happens because I've got one that's dried. Sometimes I have to do a little piece that's already dried or else you can't see the next step. So I'm going to take my Translucent Crackle Texture Paste. Translucent just means that you can see through it. Now... What you have to remember is oxides will react to any moisture, so they'll react to the moisture in this. So what I want you to do is just take some of your crackle and just add it to your project. Just add that to your project. Now, don't put anything that's left on your palette knife back into your Distress Crackle. So only take out a little bit that you need, but don't put that back because it will react. So what we will do then is just clean our palette knife so that that doesn't dry on there. And what I want you to do is then put that on one side to dry. So you can go and make a brew now and just leave it and leave it overnight if necessary. You can go back in the garden and come back and do this another time. What I love about the... Distress Crackle Translucent is, it's a one-step thing. It works straight away. I don't have to do loads of steps. It's, um, you can bend it. So you can, it's got movement and it still stays on there. And can you see that beautiful crackle? But can you also notice, this is the colour underneath and look what happens when you put the crackle on top. It changes the colour. 
so you get a light uh, different colors going throughout so it just looks wonderful so now you've got a beautiful background but you've also got that texture of crackle on there which is wonderful so what i'm going to do then is just experiment and see if i can just add a little bit of white embossing as well and the good thing is i didn't get the embossing out oh you can't make it up no. now it's okay for me to experiment because if it doesn't work it's my card and i can experiment and if it doesn't work then you don't need to do it so you can see i've added this to a black mat i added it to a black mat because i wasn't i didn't when i came to do the project i didn't think to do the white embossing but now when i'm looking at it i'm thinking will the white embossing take so i'm just going to give it a go so i've touched this card quite a few times so i'm going to just add a little bit of the anti-static bag just to there. Now, note I've let mine dry completely. And what I'm going to do is try and find the stamp that I want, which it's never the first stamp that you go to, is it? It's always the last stamp that you go to. There you go. Let's just place that back under so it's not in my way. There we go. Right, so let's see if we can just have a little bit of random stamping. So I'm going to use my Take Flight stamp set. Now it's got texture on there, but it's got some open areas as well. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink and I'm just going to ink part of that text up and just press it just on the project now it may have taken some areas it may have not it doesn't matter that's what experimenting is all about so let's just see if there's yeah it's got a little bit of that stamping on there for me lovely So you can see that that's on there. And do I want to add a little bit more? Let me just take my beard. So he's going to stand there. Now, I just think I want just that little touch. We can add more if we want to, but we can't take it away. So let's just leave that there at the moment. Move everything out of the way because then we're not fighting for space like we normally are. So I'm just going to plug my heat tool in. I never leave the heat tool plugged in. That's just me because for safety reasons. And we're just going to heat the heat tool up. And just let that get warm. And just give that time but i love how the translucent crackle uh, paste sort of gives the color other colors as well and i can see the other color through which i absolutely love i will lift that up so you can see that can you see where you can see the color as well through and i just love that i love little things like that so i'm just waiting for this to heat up there we go and then i'm just going to heat my embossing now obviously if i thought to do this before i added my mat and layer well i would have done it before i added the mat and layer but obviously i didn't let's just give that a little bit of a turn just so that that turns bit here now just be careful where you put your hands because you don't want to burn your hands there 
there we go i've now got my white embossing on there can you see just so that you can see that and i've still got the texture on there as well now depending obviously i've got less of the crackle here than i have there so obviously the more crackle it will just go into the open areas as well so it's just lovely so i'm just going to bend that just slightly now you will do that before you add it to your black mat i've done it as i added to the black mat because i just thought of it at that time so what this means is because i'm not going to add it in a book or anything like that if you can flatten it out you would just add it to a book or just add it and leave it for a half an hour and it'll flatten out i'm just going to fight with it when i add it to my card blank that's me all over right so what i've done then is i'm going to use my quirky birds stamp set and i've got the quirky bird with the hearts on there so i'm just going to take my quirky bird and we'll stamp that with the nocturne ink the black and as always i'm just going to give that a little bit of time just to grab hold of that card and not be too quick to lift the design just so that you get a good print now i've got two of the beards already cut out because i'm thinking i want one here like that one here but we can't move them tracy that's it just one here and then i did a third because i couldn't make my mind up whether i wanted a third or not so it doesn't matter if i cut this out and then i don't use it we can decide that at the time but i cut two of them out just to save a little bit of time i mean yes sometimes i cut everything out but this time i just thought i'd save a little bit of time now you may be asking well why have you added the white embossing one because i wanted to test it to see if it would take and two because i'm going to add white splatters it just puts a little bit of that white in the background just so it looks a little bit more cohesive so let's just cut around our little bird and the feet aren't difficult to cut out just go in and out doesn't have to be precise at all so just cut in and out with those there we go and i always like to work with less card if i can so that i'm not holding too much card and if i can try and avoid just holding the actual cut out piece too much let me just cut a little where was it a little bit more off there that's it so yes i think i will add the three but i'm not adding them in um black and white yet i'm going to color one first so the colours I've got are my Prisma colour pencils and I have dark purple PC931 which I'm going to class as my dark. Then I'm going to use process red PC994 and then a little bit of Parma violet PC1008. So dark, medium, light and I've tested the two colours on here to see if I want to use them. So let's take the darkest colour first and we'll just use that circular motion just to add the colour just to my beard nothing too technical just just going around in a circular motion just to add some of that purple the only thing that I stipulate is that you don't press on too hard with your first layer so then I'm going to go into that darker layer with the process red. And what I picked this colour for is 
it picks out the sort of tone of this that it's changed it to. So just blending into the darker colour. And just using a light touch. I'm not pressing too hard at all. I'm then going to use my light colour, which for me is the Palmer Violet 1008. And I'm just going to... Now, if you use a sharp pencil, it works so much easier. You can get into those little areas far easier with a sharper pencil. I haven't sharpened them. I'm just going with the flow at the moment. I'm then going to go back to that darker colour and I'm going to lay down a little bit more of that pigment. So I'm laying down a little bit more of that pigment still in a circular motion. Now, obviously, if you're doing this at home, it is far better to colour first, then cut out, because then, like me, you're not having to hold down your cut out piece because you've already coloured it and then cut it out. I did the cutting out because of recording purposes, the flow is, is better. So sometimes we'll do things in a video that's in a different order than you maybe would do them in real life, mainly because I'm thinking about the flow for you when I'm doing the video. That's the light colour, Tracy. You don't want that yet. So we want the process red. And go in to that first layer of colour. And just lay down a little bit more of that pigment. And you go into the previous colour just to blend that out a little. Then we'll take the lighter colour. And it's great, it doesn't need too much colouring at all. Just going into the previous colour, just to smooth out a little bit of those layers. So it's entirely up to you how much time you take to blend out your layers. For me, it, it's worth it just taking a little bit of time just to blend out your layers. You smooth out the card and the open areas in the card, the white areas. But the problem is we often press too hard too soon and then we've got nowhere to go. Just add a little bit of that. But what I feel with the a touch of process red, it just brings on some of that colour that is there as well. And you haven't got much area to colour. So just playing around with composition, as you can see, I'm just playing around with my composition because I will have the three birds like so. Now, let me just move that. This is how much a faff. And I'm going to raise them up as well. So they're slightly raised and I still want to see some of the texture from the crackle as well. So what I'm going to do on this one is just colour the hearts. I'm just going to colour the hearts and leave the other part of it white. So I'm just going to colour those hearts. just with the process red, just to bring out that background a little more. And again, not too much is needed. Obviously we will add the white areas. And this is why, I would, this is what I love about this crackle. 
it's flexible and it's just wonderful right so let's place this like so now you can see i'm continuing to play around with my design because i want to leave a little bit of the texture showing and i want to leave some of the background showing and this touch of white embossing so i'm going to do these hearts now with the a little bit of the darkest colour and then the lightest colour just to mix that up a little bit. Now there's no point trying to add your touches of white just until you let it settle a little bit and then your white will take a little bit better and obviously if I used a sharp pencil you can get into those areas much much better. So let's grab our white pen. Let's grab some adhesive. But this is why I love doing something simple. It doesn't always have to be complicated techniques. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of my pen flare. You can add pieces of card mounted one on top of each other. If you haven't got the product, you can use your 3D foam mats, whatever you fancy whatever you've got in your craft room so let's just add you a little bit lower now of course i should have added the white before i go and do this but i just want my card to settle a little bit you can let yours settle and rest and then add your white pieces but with recording a video again sometimes it dictates the whole process and the format of the process. So we'll add those white areas shortly. There we go. And then let's go back to our stamp set. And on the stamp set, along with the two other birds and the heart, we've got the sentiments. Imagine, tweet, fearless, dare to be different. And I think I'm going to use the dare to be different cut that up a little bit as well so let's just take our little beard add that there let's just grab our a7 acrylic block and i'll just pick up the other one that i said to you just let it dry bear with me let me just pick that up you can already see it's changing color it's picking up a bit of the brown here at the top and it's already changing colour. Love it. And I've now got another background that I could then turn this way and perhaps we can use some florals on that one. Just, this is what I love about simple backgrounds, simple techniques, you know, easy to do, doesn't have to be complicated at all. Don't be frightened of stamping. Stamping is so easy. There's two things you need to remember. One, as long as you've got the right ink pad for purpose, you're fine. And, and go really basic. Think about just doing your stamping in black. All you need to know is if it's a detailed stamp, you need an ink pad that's got a good open time. VersaFine Claire is perfect. Use your black ink pad and then you can colour with any medium apart from your alcohol inks. And then... Um, if you want to colour it with your alcohol inks, you just need to use a dye-based ink pad, a memento, or even your distress inks. So, pare it down. Don't try to take on too much information too quickly, because the professionals, or whatever you want to call us, they've only absorbed that information over years. So, don't you try and absorb the same information in one week it's impossible just go very basic and do basic and trust me you will love it and if you get products that are versatile and you can use over and over again year in year out honestly it's wonderful right let's let's shut up rabbiting and let's use our dare to be different sentiment so let's use that dare to be different so my objective with my youtube videos are to break down barriers and to break down the myths 
that stamping is difficult. There is nothing difficult about stamping. It's about not taking on too much information. Grasp the basics first. And even if you repeat those basics over and over until you've got them, that's fine. Just change your colour schemes. It's not a problem. Change your format and stick with those basics initially and then take one more bit of information each time as you develop your skills. Wonderful. What I love by sta about stamps is they never date. They are there all the time. If you've got a quality product, my stamps are quality photopolymer, so they, they don't deteriorate. They are beautiful quality. So let's use that dare to be different. And I love daring to be different. It's wonderful. Let's cut this sentiment up. You just do you. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. So let's cut that up. There we go. Dare to be different. So now I've got that cut up. I can add this to my project. Shall we have a little bit of a faux black outline? It's quite cool in my craft room. I'm not putting the heating on though, because the minute I put the heating on for two seconds, I'm then too hot. So let's just add a little bit of a faux black mat. Just on my card. There we go. Just got those faux black mats on there. Let's just clean that up, mainly because I, I get a bit paranoid about anything black because it can just go everywhere. So I'm going to have a little play around. So this is going to move because, as you know, I've used the pin flare. So there to be different. Perfect. So we'll place them there. We'll use our adhesive. And you can see I still haven't done my white touches. You can see that I'm giving the um, pencils just the, you know, because you've been rubbing that card, haven't you? With your pencils, you, you know, even if you've been blending very gently like me. Well, I like to just give the fibres of the, of the card just time to relax again. And I find that the white pen goes, goes on a bit better. It can still be hit and miss. I have to be honest with the white pens. Right, so let's just make sure that white pen is working. First of all, let's put that little dot in the eye. And let's just add our little white touches. And you may think, well, you know, are those white touches really weird? Oh, they are. The white touches just bring everything to life. I'll lift it up just so you can see there. And it works so much better, my white pen, for me, if I just let those relax. And it just, it does make a difference with the touches of white, for me, personally. Now, let's see if I can do things in the right order for a change. So now we will just add a little bit of shading to our sentiments. Now, obviously, we've got those distress products under there. So you have to be aware those distress products will react. Make sure that she's not. So I'm just going to add my distress. No, my ink tense grey pencil just so that I can add a little bit of shading. Now I've hardly got any water on there just so that I don't react the distress product too much and it's just the ink tense pencil that reacts. There we go. Oh and I haven't got too many products out. So then let's add our Posca pen. 
Now, if you don't want to, if you want to make sure, sorry, putting my arm across there. If you want to make sure you don't get anything across your sentiments, just cut a strip of card just to protect your sentiments. Let's just cut that a little bit shorter. So you can just protect those sentiments quite easily. And then we can add our wonderful splatters that I just adore. Again, it's your project, you do you. If you don't like the splatters, then you don't do them. Not a problem at all. So you can remove that from there now. Just lovely. So what I did, I added a quarter of an inch mat, a quarter of an inch bigger mat of black card. Now I'm pushing, let's just use this. If you've got low tack tape, oh good grief i can't speak if you've got double-sided tape it wouldn't matter because the double-sided tape would grab hold of this really quickly now what's going to happen is i'm going to try and force this down because it's all curled because i've got the black mat on there first so i'm going against the grain you know you should have done the embossing before i added the black mat i didn't it is what it is so let's just take and what I'm going to do is compensate for that I'm just going to add some adhesive just to the center now if you've got your double-sided tape because it grabs holes so quickly you don't the lumpy bumpy doesn't really affect isn't it doesn't really help sorry the double-sided tape really helps I don't use double-sided tape mainly because I don't get it in the right place the first time it's just human nature. I know some of you can get it in the right place the first time. I don't get it in the right place the first time. Rarely. I always have to move it. And that's why I like to use an adhesive, a good strong adhesive. But of course, I'm, act I'm asking this adhesive to perform miracles. So just bend that into so it just grabs hold of your card i don't believe in this you know too many strict rules you know make it work for you and that has stuck down just lovely just so you can see that so i'm just going to place this on one side i just want to check if i want one finishing touch where have you gone so i've got my uh, branched heart and i'm just going to grab one of the chevrons so let's grab the chevron. I love these chevrons. Let's just grab, I haven't got enough space on the card that I've got. So, and then just as you um, start to do the next stage, just make sure again that your card is stuck down. Where is, let's move that wipe out of the way. Let's place this back. Crikey, I haven't got too many products out either. There we go. So let's take the chevrons and then I'm going to use the black ink. I only want one of the chevrons, so we'll use whichever one's the first one I've inked. Just stamp this on white card, a scrap of white card. And you can see I just gave that some time. Give that a blot, especially if you're worried that you're going to touch the stamped image with your fingers because you know what that'll do. It's got a good open time. It means the ink stays wetter longer. So because of that, you can smudge it. So you just need to blot. I love the chevron because it's distressed. Works rather nicely. And sometimes it's just all as you need as an added embellishment. Again, showing how stamps work so beautifully together. Using the copier paper just to protect my card. So, that's it. So just seeing if I want to add the chevron 
just let me see because what it does is you can leave it off but what i like is that it it sort of brings the outer card into the design but i'm just having a look with and without it and that's what you should be prepared to do let me just place that up there see i prefer it there like that let me just check which side I want it on. I think I like it on this side. Again, you don't have to add yours, but I quite like just bringing a little bit more of that in, which I'm doing. So I'm just going to add this now to my design. You can keep yours paired back however you wish because it's your card. Everybody looks at things in different ways and that's why artwork is subjective and I always think it's about enjoying the process which I absolutely love and I love the fact I can just move that a little bit need to I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just around the edges let's see if we've got enough moisture on there just to no there's not enough moisture on there let's grab a little bit of water just to add a little bit of shading there we go that's it and i'm just going to add a little bit more white posca pen just over the black card as well just so it looks part of the project and then when this dries we've got our dimensional pieces on there just so you can see and I love how oh my camera's going don't do that how the colour has changed from this and you can see it on the edge there and in there but it's changed that color absolutely love it so i hope you enjoyed this little short um video and little uh, snippet of an idea uh, and perhaps you can develop it further so love to all enjoy your weekend and i'll see you all soon bye for now